Design Cast Podcast, the podcast for design and STEAM educators. Hello and welcome to Design Cast, a podcast where I interview a wide range of excellent guests in design and STEAM education to get their unique perspectives. My name is Jason Reagan and I use my 20 plus years of experience as a design educator to dig deep into complex issues. This podcast has one simple mission, to create a community of people around the world that are interested in design and STEAM education. Each episode, I chat with guests from all corners of the design world, from classroom teachers to authors and even to educational consultants. We discuss a wide range of topics that we feel are relevant today. I do want to ask you that if you're enjoying this podcast, please leave a review, rate, subscribe, share, or download from your favorite podcasting app. This helps the podcast get discovered by listeners that might not find it otherwise. Also, it helps me to continually define the direction of future guests and episodes. Feel free to drop by my website, www.jasonreagan.ga, to leave me a comment or to sign up to be considered as a future guest on future episodes. Also, don't forget to stop by Anchor and leave me a voice clip that could even end up in an upcoming show. Thanks for listening. So let's get to it. I am so excited to announce the launch of a new podcast network called DNA Podcast Network. The Design Network Alliance, or DNA, was founded by Evo Hanan and myself as a result of DesignCast number 16. We talked all about the need to connect design educators globally. DNA is a collective group of like-minded design educators from around the world. We have one simple mission, to connect design and STEAM educators with each other and with designers that want to make a difference in design education to make it better for future generations. The DNA Podcast Network is a hub for podcasts that cover the topics around design, design and technology, design thinking, STEAM, and STEM education. If you are interested in hearing more great content, head over to www.dnapodcastnetwork.ga today. Click on the thumbnail of the podcast that you want to hear and enjoy. If you have any other podcasts that you enjoy that cover similar topics, please feel free to get in touch with me and let me know so that I can look at adding them to the network. Finally, spread the word. Share with your network and your PLN and use the hashtag DNA Podcast Network. Welcome back to another episode of Design Cast. And today's really special because I have had so many requests from people for me to talk a little bit about what my background has been. And so if you've not heard podcasts where I've been a guest on or something like that, you probably don't know about my background. And so I would love to, I want to share that with you today. Uh, as a way to just kind of welcome everybody back to school if you're in the northern hemisphere and if you're in the southern hemisphere to wish you a happy mid-year break or end of mid-year break so uh anyway thanks guys so much for listening so i actually started my career in my home state of georgia and i was working as a technology education teacher and at the time the industrial arts and the shop sort of programs were dying and disappearing and it was a real shame people were retiring and what I found was that these programs I mean these very expensive very heavy duty pieces of equipment and whatnot were just being auctioned or putting they were being put into like warehouses and things like that so it was really a shame to watch this die and of course now 
things are coming back in and maker spaces have arisen and, and tinker spaces and things like that. So it's just been really interesting to see the evolution of design and design thinking and how that has sort of evolved over the last 25 years. And so I actually went back to school, got my master's in teaching what we call technological studies. And so it was technology education, which later evolved into pre-engineering and, and STEAM and STEM and, and whatnot. So taught in my home state of Georgia for a year. And then I had an opportunity to move overseas. And so I moved overseas to Beijing, China. And I was the farthest I could possibly be away from home. And I actually worked in an institute of technology, one of the larger institute of technology in China. And it was really great because I was teaching English, but it was to kids who were going to do international business. They were going to do international affairs. And I learned a lot about them through that, of course, as a professor. But also I had the technical background to really relate to them because many of them were going to go into businesses being you know, international business people of technological studies of different things to do with engineering or technology or even just um, innovation, which was really great because I had that added bonus of having the background. So after a year in Beijing, I moved back to my home state and worked there for a couple of years and I was fine to do that, but I could always feel the pull to be back overseas. And so after two years of working in a public high school in near uh, in the suburb of Atlanta, I chose to move back to China. And so I moved to a school where I was working as a an assistant manager. It was a language learning school. And the whole purpose of it was so that I could then find my a job in like an international school setting. And so in 2003, I was very fortunate during the SARS pandemic to actually find a job in China working in an international school. And that's kind of where my journey doing MYP started. And so I'm very, very lucky and very fortunate and very humbled to have had those opportunities to do that. And so I moved to a town just west of Shanghai named Suzhou. And many people listening is probably they know the city or maybe even worked with me there. But um, it was a really neat place. It was um, it was this it is still is it's this um, sort of international free trade zone. Um, and I, I really it's an industrial park, basically. And it was a joint venture between the Chinese government and the Singaporean government. So I worked at the school that the Singaporean government set up with the Ministry of Education in China. And so it was just really neat to see things move so, so, so fast in China. Um, you could go away for a week and come back and there's a new building or there's a new this or a new that. And so it was just so fun to watch the innovation happen all around me. And I, I you know, I think people who are especially living in Asia who are listening will relate because stuff moves so fast. And, you know, if you're not happy with the way something is, just close your eyes and a few minutes later something changes. And so I know the pandemic has caused things to slow down some. But, you know, even here in Korea where I'm currently at, there's a lot of technical innovation happening. And so, you know, anyway, I'm in China. And then 2007, I moved back home with my wife because we just were ready for a change. And I worked at the Atlanta International School and I worked to set up the beginnings of their design program there, which is at this point, thanks to John Davenport and Lenny Dutton and a few others, um, it's really a strong program there. And so it's been great to see that particular program grow. I had an opportunity a few years later to work for a year in Bermuda, which was um, really, really interesting. It's a beautiful, beautiful country, and I enjoyed working there. But I had a very young child, and it just um, – we needed to not stay there for too long because of that. Um, nothing to do with Bermuda. It's just we needed to be closer to family. And so we moved back to my home state again, but I was working in Savannah, Georgia. And I worked there for three years, and I, I set up the, the MYP technology at the time program. I was the MYP coordinator. Um, I helped – 
set up to get the schools authorized, the partnership high school with our middle school, and then move back overseas because by that point we had two sons and they weren't really keen to speak Chinese because they were in the U.S. and nobody was speaking Chinese back to them. <laughs> and so we said, well, let's go work with a total immersion setting. So we moved back to China to Suzhou again to the same school because it was just such a great opportunity and had grown so much at that point that I really, really loved the school had grown into. And so we were there for several more years before we then moved to where we are now, which is in South Korea. And so my journey didn't start as a teacher. I started actually as a television and radio production person. And so, uh, you know, I graduated from college with a master's in, I mean, with a bachelor's in fine arts. And I was working in a television station on the graveyard shift, receiving satellite downloads and helping with the morning news. And while that was fun and that was exciting, it was really, really um, low paying. <laughs> I just thought, you know what, I, I didn't go to college to make this little bit of money. So that's when I pursued my master's degree in education. And during all of these different positions, something I've noticed is that every place is different, but all kids kind of want the same things. You know, it doesn't matter what their backgrounds are. They all just want to be involved. They just want to be accepted. They want to be part of something. And so I found in my design programs and the programs I've been part of or the programs I've led, creating a sense of belonging is nearly as important as students understanding the design cycle <laughs> because the collaboration part and the feeling of belonging helps to enhance that design cycle. And so I guess looking back now, and now that I've kind of, I'm still teaching some design, but I've, I've moved a lot out of that. And I'm working more with older students doing career related pathways and whatnot. I'm starting to see that, you know, no matter what we're choosing to use, whether it's IGCSE or it's Project Lead the Way or it's BTEC or it's, you know, design or it's whatever, you know, in the end, it's about the process. In the end, it's about students learning how to solve problems, how to think critically and how to use what they know to innovate. And so no matter what program you're working in, no matter what you're doing, I, I think that... You know, that's where the essence of this is. Yes, we can do robotics. Yes, we can do 3D printing. We can do laser cutting. We can do whatever. But coming down to it, it always is that sense of belonging and that problem solving. And I think if students are able to embrace that and teachers in design are able to embrace that, I think that we're going to find students are going to be successful in whatever they choose to do because they need those skills no matter what their background's going to be. So I think that's kind of my pearl of wisdom, if, if there is one in this little ramble. Um, I'm really, really excited about the direction that DesignCast is going. Uh, every time there's a new episode released, I feel like the identity of the podcast continues to evolve, and it continues to be refined, and it continues to be uh, made into that thing which I would love for everyone to be a part of. So if you have any ideas for future episodes, please reach out. You've got all of my contact information. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter. You can respond to this podcast with a voice note. There's all kinds of ways you can connect with me. But I would love, love, love to hear from you and to help shape where the next 75 episodes or 100 episodes go. Also, if you're interested in being a guest, please reach out. Would love to connect with you and hear your story of how you became involved in design and then what you would recommend for people to read and, and, and what you're excited about. That's sort of the, the formula, right? And so if I stick to the formula, you've now heard my background. You've heard one of my origin story to quote david mcmahon uh i think now i just i'm really excited about what's going to happen to education 
when the the pandemic starts to fade away and i know that could be a long time from now but i'm really excited about what we're looking at in the education field and i do think there's a lot of innovation to be had i think there's a lot of innovation that's happened and i am really really hopeful of where the innovation is going i also would love to just see students doing things with their skills that they're learning the soft skills again we've talked about this not a big fan of that name but these skills that help them survive their interaction on a daily basis and make them thrive and i would love to see students being able to apply those skills in just a whole array of opportunities and so i do think that we're moving in that direction i think there's some great programs out there you can go back and listen to some past episodes and they're there i do think though that we've got a lot to go a lot of room for growth and i am excited about where that's going to be moving forward so you know i'd love to hear what you think so if you just don't mind sending me uh, a quick message or commenting i'd love to hear where you think things are going because right now it seems like everything's kind of moving at a snail's pace which is not necessarily a bad thing. It gives us a chance to kind of retool, catch our breath, and whatnot. Also, I would like to recommend a book to everybody. Uh, I, I've mentioned it many times before, but I'm immensely enjoying Dark Horse from Todd Rose. I think it's just such a neat, neat book. It has so many little pearls of wisdoms to talk about how people have ended up doing fulfilling and passionate things through non-traditional routes and i am absolutely just eating it up i'm I'm purposely reading it in very small doses because i'm just enjoying it so much and so i recommend that book i also really love adam savage's book every tool is a hammer i think that anyone who teaches design should read it and just listen to how he has his journey his journey so neat i'd love to have him on the podcast so if he's listening (laughs) i'd love to hear from you and from todd rose anyway um so i'd love to hear from you guys i'd love to see where we're going to go for the next you know several dozen episodes Um, or maybe you're tired of this and want something new please 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 let me know i'm really really excited we had our first after party for the podcast with georgina dean last weekend it was a lot of fun we had people from five different countries there enjoying just some nice chit chat there was there was no expectation everybody went in just having like a conversation at a coffee house and so big thanks to sarah candela for that she really helped to promote that event and i'm really hoping that you guys we can do more of that kind of thing so if you guys are interested in that please let me know but this has been great i hope that you thank you for indulging me (laughs) on my little rant but i just feel like it's time to take stock of what we're doing it's a time to kind of pause and reflect and to think about you know deliberately what is necessary and what can we let go of so i think that's probably my biggest message here is what can we let go of so you guys be safe and stay healthy and i will see you soon I hope you enjoyed that episode of Design Cast. I'm Jason, your host, and I produced and created this podcast. If you have any input, I would love to hear from you, and I look forward to seeing you again really soon. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. Explore more podcasts at www.teachbetterpodcastnetwork.com. We'll see you on the next episode.
Jason here from DesignCast, and I am just so pleased that you're here listening to DesignCast. I really appreciate all the feedback everyone's been giving me. It's been so fantastic to hear it, and it just really inspires me to continue going. Of course, making this week on week is difficult. If you feel so inclined, of course, there is no pressure. I would love it if you would take part in helping to support this podcast. And so I'm using a website called Buy Me a Coffee, and there are a couple different ways you can give. One is you can give a one-time gift, and then also there are monthly gifts that you can give. And by doing that, you will receive some services from me. Number one, you'll be part of Signcast support family. Also, there are different levels within that. So head on over to buymeacoffee.com slash designcast, and you can find out more about the different ways you can support me. Thank you.